why I always say date yourself because the more you know about yourself deeply, the easier it is to find where your joy comes from. Hey friends, welcome to Hot Flash Mama Podcast. On today's show, I have Kristen Finch and she has two top 5% podcasts. She's going to talk about starting something new for the second half of our lives. We go through so much taking care of other people in our lives and the second half of our life, it's kind of about taking care of us. Welcome to the show, Kristen. Oh, thank you so much for having me. I'm so excited to be with you and your listeners today. And I can't wait to just encourage and lift them up. I know that you're going to do a fantastic job of that. One of the things I wanted to have you elaborate on a little bit, what is a top 5% podcast? I know that's impressive. Yeah, well, it's interesting because what they base that on is actually more to do with ratings and review and listenership than it is like that you have the biggest downloads. So the top 5% really just means you're probably consistently doing it. Mm -hmm. You're getting, they're looking for engagement. So it really means that you have some level or percentage of people that are engaging with your show regularly. So that's really what that number means. I would say the biggest podcasts, they're really at like the top 0.5%. So I'm making my way, right? I'm getting there, but it means that I've probably been doing it for a while, which I started my first one two and a half years ago, my second one about a year ago. And so really it just means I've shown up, I've been consistent, I'm adding value and I'm here for my audience. That's incredible. And it's what I want to do. I want to add value and just serve people. So tell us a little bit about what brought you into podcasting. Absolutely. So first of all, I just want to encourage all you ladies out there that are thinking about starting something new, whether it be a podcast or otherwise. I started my show two and a half years ago. I bought my microphone five years before I started my first podcast. I had planned on it, but then my own business and my career journey took a a turn that I wasn't quite expecting. And I ended up working full time for somebody for three years. So I put it on pause. But I only say that to say like, even if you have a dream or this thing that you want to do, and you're not even sure how, even if it takes you a while, that's okay. That happens with a lot of us. So anyways, I started the podcast because for me, I love having conversations in person, but online as well. It just seemed like such a great opportunity for me to have people on and and share their stories, share things they've done in their life, and then share tips and tactics that people can apply. I liked podcasting because you can do short episodes, but you can also be a little longer. I wanted that connection with my audience and my listeners. It's funny you say that. I also bought things years in advance and had the build up to do it. I had the name, I had the plan life gets a hold of us and that fear of what other people think for what comes up to you and it tells you, Hey, don't do this. You're too old or you're too this or whatever. Mm -hmm. Then you have to get the courage back up to do it again, which is number one, really important to surround yourself with supportive people. Number two, it's also about just doing it, just stepping out and doing it and trying it. Failing forward is one of my favorite quotes. It's never a failure as long as you get back up and keep going. When you get into this second stage of life, try new things, figure out who you are, because a lot of people forget. So we have to get to know ourselves again. Was that something you struggled with? Well, it's funny. So I've even done an episode on one of my podcasts called Date Yourself. And obviously I don't mean that literally, but what I'm saying is go do things sometimes by yourself. And here's why. As women, a lot of women go shopping with girlfriends or maybe their significant other or their kids. They go to lunch with other people, which I do. I do those things too. But if you never are by yourself, you're influenced by other people's opinions. And so do you really know what you want? Do you really know what your opinion is? I actually learned this at a pretty early age. I was in high school and college. And at that time I was a beach lifeguard. But after that, I waited tables at restaurants down at the oceanfront. If I did like a double shift, I would get a break in the middle. Well, it was a 25 minute drive or more to my house. So I would go get lunch. And I remember the first time I went to lunch by myself. I mean, I was probably 17 and it felt so awkward, right? Sitting in a restaurant by myself thinking, they probably think I don't have any friends, but I was just by myself because of work. Over the years, I've been to conferences where I've flown across the country and I don't know a soul there. I end up sitting at the bar in a restaurant and I just bring a book or whatever and I'll get something to eat and a drink. 
And I've gotten more comfortable with that. I can tell you I'm influenced if I go shopping with other women. Yes. I like to shop by myself. I just do. Because I pick what I want instead of somebody saying, oh, I like this, but I don't like that. I don't go with my gut is, is often. So I always say date yourself because the more you know about yourself deeply, the easier it is to find where your joy comes from. Get to know yourself and just keep discovering things about yourself and your faith, your relationship, everything. I feel like that's what I've spent the last 10 years doing is discovering who I am. But we do tend to adapt to our surroundings. If you want to enjoy the people you hang around with, get to know who you are first because your yeah. vibe attracts your tribe and you're going to attract like-minded people, but you've got to know who you are first. You have the two podcasts. What are the names? One is called Building a Life You Love and the other one is Faith Fueled Woman. I love it. Now, when you are starting something new, it takes a lot of courage. A lot of us find identity in the people that we've cared for, the friends that we've had who we're married to. So now we're in the second part of life. In order to enjoy it and live a life that we love, it takes getting to know ourselves, but it also takes courage to try something mm -hmm. new and get outside your comfort zone. Yeah. So I think the first thing is, is if you realize whether you've had a career in something for a long time, you know, 5, 10, 20, 30 years, or whether you've been a stay-at-home mom for 5, 10, 20, 30 years, whatever your thing has been in the past doesn't de define what you have to do in the future. I had actually had a business with my mom in the early education space, but I also worked in online marketing technology for off and on for 20 years. I'm very good at tech. I'm, a, I'm like a creative problem solver, but I say that's my zone of genius, not my zone of excellence. But God for my entire life has been pulling me and I've always been the encourager. I've always been, whether it was in a leadership role in a company or whether it was with my friends, they're the ones coming to me and wanting my advice. Over the years, I just felt this like, stronger and stronger pull to do something with that gift instead of mm. it just being on the periphery. It was hard to step out of this corporate high paying, more technical. My last position for, for a couple of years was marketing technology director. It's hard because I keep having people want to put me back in that box, but mm. I know that I'm being pulled to encourage women, uplift women and help them step into this future where it feels better on the inside than it does in the outside. So the reason that I felt comfortable to step out of my comfort zone is two things. You start with small steps. You start with little experiments or little tests. You don't decide today, I'm going to start something new or a new career path. You start learning. You start exploring, right? What's available? What's out there? Could I do this? So for instance, if somebody wants to be on a podcast, just go have a conversation with somebody about a topic, even if you don't record it. How'd it feel? Did you like it? Uh, and the second thing is, I knew that I wanted to do something different. And I liked listening to podcasts. I like the format felt good to me. If anybody's wondering about something that they're thinking about doing, like stepping out into something new, hold it in your mind and think, does this feel life giving or life draining? You might love cooking, but can you imagine posting content about it all the time and talking about time? Does that feel exhausting or does that feel amazing? And if it feels amazing, you might want to keep continuing with it. If it doesn't, maybe that's something you enjoy at home on your personal time, but you really don't want to step into that in some other way. We have to kind of take a litmus test, if you will. But I think the biggest thing is start. I have this one little worksheet challenge called Bold 30. Every day for 30 days, just do one thing, a minute that feels uncomfortable, just one baby action a day. Make a choice that you're going to be willing to show up and do something different than you did yesterday. Oh my gosh, you're in so encouraging. I've always been the encourager too. I think that's where it kind of slows us down a little bit when we start something new. We don't have a lot of cheerleaders around us because we're the cheerleader. It's really important to find yourself some cheerleaders. So stop telling yourself no, telling yourself that you're not going to like it before you even try it. Give it a try right. and experience it. If you do, Enjoy it. Keep going. And if you don't, delegate it. Yeah. And here's the thing. I think one of the biggest takeaways I would love to share with people is maybe it sounds cliche, cliche, but really find your own path, blaze your own path. We don't have to just pick what everyone around us is doing, just like we don't have to go with the trends. So you have to do what feels most aligned with you and what feels good to you. I think that's the other thing is we have to stop trying to chase 
everything and just focus on what's the thing that works for us. For instance, way back, I would teach people website in a day, workshops or social media in a day. These are small business owners that don't have a lot of time and didn't have tons of extra resources. I would tell them even, this is 15 years ago, you don't need to be in all the social media platforms because you can't maintain posting to all of them. You just need to be where your people are and focus on one. Honestly, it's like the Chick-fil-A strategy. They used to only buy billboards, not TV, because they didn't have that kind of money. So they wanted to dominate the, what they could. So pick what feels good to you and stick with that. And don't worry about what the competition's doing. You don't have to do it any which way. You have permission to do it your own way and feel good about it. The last few years, I've done so much personal development. We used to call it self-help. I don't know if you remember that. Personal development has just been a game changer for me. It has prepared me for this more than I ever knew. Yeah. One of the last episodes I just did was on willingness to change and being ready. I know I mentioned that earlier, but if you're stuck or you feel stagnant or you feel like you want more growth or you just want something different in your life, the biggest indicator that that's going to happen is for you to have a willingness to change a readiness for something different. Because when we start there, we start getting curious. And when we get curious and we start to pick up a book or listen to a new podcast or talk to a friend about something or go to a functional medicine doctor, we are preparing ourselves for something new, for a new possibility. I think willingness, that's one thing you can check in with yourself about. Am I willing to make a change or do something different in this part of my life where I want something different? I want a different result. It's about mindset. I found that I was talking myself out of some really cool opportunities and really Mm. great things to try. So now I have been trying to discover the things that I want to do and that brings me joy. Say yes more to me. There's a big difference between being selfish and loving yourself and taking care of yourself because you can't take care of people around you if you're not taking care of yourself. Absolutely. It's so true. It matters what we, what we put in is what we're going to get more of out. I make more choices now than I did even five years ago. I have to think about, is this what I want to spend two hours of my life doing? I I don't go on Facebook much, but I do go on Instagram and my feed is full of faith stuff and health stuff and positive people. And I feel good when I leave there instead of how so many of us feel when we go on social sometimes where you feel drained or kind of compared to everybody else, my life seems lame, right? So we have to be careful what we put in. And like you said, that's through people, that's through content we're consuming, how much we're spending on devices. Self-care, yes, people might have tried to make it this glamorous thing, but really it just means you're taking time to renew, rest, reflect, and then be ready to go back out into the world where you're calm, you're peaceful, you can experience joy, right? You're connected and you're present in the moment instead of so overwhelmed that you're living to your to-do list for an hour from now or tomorrow. And you're not actually participating in life when we do that. So that's what self-care is about. It's not about, I went and got pampered all day. I mean, pampering's fine, but <laughs> pampering is different than self-care. Self-care is really yeah. about Are you caring for your mind, body, and spirit? All of it. Filling your cup, filling your cup up so that you have something to spill out of value, of worth. That is something that will make people better. Reading the Bible has been my go-to. I try very hard to do that first thing in the morning, every morning, give the first fruits of my day to God and let him have my focus because it changes everything for that day. So you have... a a freebie that you're going to share with the listeners today. Why don't you give me some information on that seven day program? So yeah, I have a a great uh, freebie for you. It's a seven day to more joyful living. Um, It's a guided series that you'll get through your email. And each day it has a little bit of a story. It has a exercise or something that you can do or apply in your own life. You might have a quote or a little scripture, but it's basically trying to help you shift your mindset and then do an activity or exercise to do some reflection or some journaling. It only takes a couple minutes, but each day you'll just basically be filled up with some stuff to just go into your day reflecting on joy and gratitude and how you can step into your day being more calm. So if you just go to kristenfitch.com slash seven days, you can just go there and join that seven day guided series to more joyful living. That's wonderful. Again, people can find you at... Yeah, you just go to kristenfitch.com. And then the other place that I spend some time at is on Instagram. I'm just at Kristen Fitch altogether. You know, I, I will say this is a little 
tidbit for you, but it's also for your listeners. When you want to try something new, when you want to step out of your comfort zone, you don't worry so much about anybody else to make a commitment to yourself. And that's what I did when I started podcasting. I said, no matter what my numbers look like, but this applies to all of our life, I'm going to consistently podcast at least one a week for a year. So I made the commitment to myself, no matter what the numbers look like that I wanted to. Now, some people might say for three months or they might pick a different number or once a month. But the point wasn't about the frequency. It was the, what am I consistently going to commit to myself to do? Just like walking, right? Or anything else in our lives. Kristen, thank you so much for coming on here. Can you tell people just one more time when your podcasts air? Sure. Well, Pamela, thanks so much for having me on. I enjoyed our conversation. My podcasts are Building a Life You Love and Faith-Fueled Woman. Those usually release a new episode on Wednesdays. So I'd love for you to come check it out as well. I'm going to go check it out. It's Wednesday. So I'm going to check it out now. Thank you so much. And thank you guys for listening and tuning in. I will see you next time on Hot Flash Mama Podcast.